Hello there, welcome to another video on the Peter Haskins YouTube channel. As always, like and subscribe. This is a new video about P.D. Ospinsky. It's a short essay that I wrote about P.D. Ospinsky's ideas surrounding the esoteric inner circle, secret knowledge, and the evolution of humanity. P.D. Ospinsky was born in 1878, passed away in 1947. He was a Russian esotericist, philosopher, and author. He's best known for his collaboration with the Greek-Armenian mystic named George Gurdjieff, who he met in Moscow in 1915 and worked closely with him until 1924 within the Fourth Way movement. His classic book entitled In Search of the Miraculous chronicles his encounter with this enigmatic man named Gurdjieff. However, Spinsky had a life and career prior to meeting Gurdjieff, or he's known as G. When he met G, he was already quite well known as a mathematician and philosopher with the publication of Tertium Organum, as well as A New Model of the Universe. This short essay today will address ideas that he explored in the book titled A New Model of the Universe, which was published in 1931. A New Model of the Universe is a collection of essays in which Ospensky explores the meaning of humanity in the light of the tumultuous 20th century that was just gaining momentum when Ospensky put pen to paper. The world had just begun to climb out of the nightmarish hole of World War I, as well as the hellish landscape of a global pandemic as the Spanish flu decimated the world population with more precision than the Great War itself. The stock market crash in 1929 and the rise of fascism in the defeated nations of World War I would spark an even greater calamity and crisis of humanity as tens of millions more human beings were about to be slaughtered by fellow human beings as the dawn of the nuclear age sulked in the shadows of history waiting for its time on the global stage. Now why is Ospensky relevant to us today? Ospensky intuitively sensed these cataclysmic changes which were occurring in the, uh, on the evolutionary trajectory of the human species. He was able to see the big picture of human existence being released from the bonds of merely understanding the history of humanity in terms of the last six to 7,000 years of existence. Ospensky was able to see human existence on a long timeline which runs through many, many stages of civilized and barbaric periods, going back prior to our prehistoric periods of time. For some reason, Ospensky felt the long line of human ancestors whispering in his ears, telling him that human history was much deeper and cyclical than we could ever imagine. He knew, and more importantly, he understood that humanity was nothing more than another type of animal roaming around the earth with a distinctly self-destructive nature and yet also gifted with an unlimited intellectual and psychological potential which surpassed all other earthly creatures. Yet Ospensky wondered how is this potential of the human animal unlocked? How? This was Ospensky's question. If humanity was going to help creation evolve, how is this destructive nature overcome within the human psyche? How can we unlock the better angels of our nature, as Lincoln would say, and participate in the progress of creation and instead of merely participating in creation as just another destructive and cruel creature? Is this done by all of humanity on a large scale, or is feral-minded humanity led by a few spiritually advanced humans who are open to mystical states of consciousness? In this classic book, entitled A New Model of the Universe, Spinsky writes of the endless potential of the human species in two particular essays, one titled Esotericism and Modern Thought and another entitled Superman. In this video, I'll be tapping into the ideas expressed in Esotericism and Modern Thought. At the beginning of his essay on Esotericism, he says that there was a long time ago when human thought referred to man as differing little or not at all from animal. 
Humanity and the civilizations which arise from it rise and fall, rise and fall. There is no clear, even upward, trajectory of human development. Ospensky conveys clearly that he believes humans descend and ascend the evolutionary ladder of Darwin and Spencer. This journey up and down the ladder coincides with the general psychological condition of the human species within those various civilizations. It is the evolution of the human psyche that interests Ospensky and Gurdjieff as exemplified in the teachings of the Fourth Way, Orthodox Christianity, and any of the major inner teachings of a major world religion. Religion and the nature of religious experience is based on the psychological and not the moral. Ospensky did not consider the civilization of his time, which we are now entering the last tumultuous stages in the early 21st century, as healthy in any stretch of the imagination. Rather, he considered our civilization as sickly and already in the death throes as it is based solely on a profound barbarism. It was Ospensky's belief that the only true civilization was contained within a small group of humans, what he called the esoteric circle. He writes in this essay, Esotericism and Modern Thought, that, quote, true civilization exists only in esotericism. It is the inner circle which is in fact the truly civilized portion of humanity, and its members of the inner circle are civilized men, living in a country of barbarians among savages. End quote. This inner circle is a group of humans who have advanced states of what he called, quote, mystical states of consciousness, where a knowledge is conveyed to them, rising beyond the limitations of the five senses. The common spiritual wisdom conveyed through the surface teachings of the major religions are distortions and perversions of this inner teaching. The teachings contained in the Gospel of Matthew, commonly known as the Sermon on the Mount, are traces of these inner teachings, indicating that Jesus of Nazareth was a member of this inner circle. These teachings were contained in what was termed the mysteries in the ancient world. The mysteries, or the mystery religions, contained the ancient esoteric thread of thought that had been passed down through the eons of time. Ospensky speculates that it was the mysteries that powered the sudden and mysterious rise of Greek culture in the 7th century BC, following the dark periods in Greece of the 8th and 9th centuries BC. The mysteries sat alongside the popular cults and religions of Greek culture, with the mysteries providing a connection with the idea and reality of immortality in a world fascinated with the journey of the soul the birth of the soul within matter, and of course the death and resurrection with a return to a former life. The expressions of these existential desires were channeled through mystery schools which performed theatrical performances of this cosmic drama similar to the divine liturgy still found today in the Orthodox Christian Church in its various forms. These schools and their performances prepared the initiates for a slow and gradual realization of a new cycle of thought and feeling. Ospensky surmised that the initiates were being prepared to experience these new states of consciousness, leading to immortality itself. These esoteric schools continue to persist even during times of extreme barbarism, as in our age in the early 21st century. However, their existence is not mechanical in nature. Their presence continues, if only in the shadows at times like this, due to the conscious efforts of members of this small group of civilized humanity as they quietly and earnestly cultivate these ideas and pass them on to those who have ears to hear, as Jesus taught. In my own personal journey, men like Dr. Charles Ashen and Robin Amos were indeed members of this esoteric circle and worked diligently at gathering those around them who were interested in the inner teachings of the Gospels of Jesus Christ. 
During biblical times, there were people like Dr. Ashenon and Robin Amos who sought to lead a people out of dark barbarism that is the reality of the uncultivated human experience. Biblical characters such as Moses, Abraham, Joshua, and Noah are all examples of these members of the esoteric circle as they assist a barbarous people toward a new and civilized life, revived and reborn. In oftentimes dangerous and violent conditions, members of the esoteric circle are sent out into the midst of a barbarous people to bring ideas and principles of a civilized society so that art, philosophy, science, and religion grow and form into what we know as a culture. The formation of this culture represents the actual boundary between itself and the barbarous state itself as exemplified in crimes, for instance. This issue of defining a crime, a fine line, Ospensky says because if a government defines a crime, yet is itself existing in a barbarous state already, then the definition of a crime is relative, leading to an increase in crime and social inequity, as certain ethnic groups are targeted for certain petty crimes, while other groups who maintain political power are exempt from prosecution of which much more violent and egregious crimes. The root cause of this barbarism lies within humanity itself, and it was this realization which drove Ospensky toward Gurdjieff in the Fourth Way teaching. He knew that addressing humanity in terms of this already barbarous state was the key to reaching a solution. As Ospensky escaped Russia in 1919, he and his friends experienced the absolute collapse of their society in Russia with the horrific dawn of the Soviet Empire and the Bolsheviks. He experienced firsthand what that barbarism looked like. He knew what it looked like to see his own country descend into complete darkness. So when he writes about the idea of slavery in modern society, he knew that it took different forms. He knew that the inner world of modern life was full of influences which intentionally foster panic and fear and distractions of all kinds. He was indeed a prophet as we are today enslaved and overwhelmed by the very technology that was sent to set us free. In order to destroy the principles of barbarism, which promotes the growth of barbarism, the focus must be on the inner psychological life of humanity. As Ospinsky points out, it is within the human psyche that the principles of barbarism take root and grow out of control. Ospinsky points out that modern man, as with other societies that have fallen prey to the principles of barbarism, needs to have humility as their core characteristic. The presence of the characteristic of grandiosity, as the original sin is described in the creation story of Adam and Eve, is the key. Humanity must realize that we need outside help from this ancient thread of esoteric teaching in order to create balance within our increasingly barbarous society. Without this guidance from the esoteric circle, the barbarous state will continue to build and build energy until all truth is relative and fear rules the day and what we call Western civilization will collapse and then the rebuilding will begin.